Now, usually on this channel, what I like to do is do videos that are maybe kind of serious or have some kind of merit or some kind of relevance to what's going on in NASCAR at the time it's being made. But there's other times where I just want to do some fun ones. And today, I think I'm going to do a fun one that's definitely more for you guys at home. This weekend, NASCAR's going to the Phoenix International Raceway. No, I'm sorry. Uh, the Jeff Gordon International Raceway. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, the, the Phoenix Raceway. Doesn't matter the name. We're going to Phoenix this week. And the deal is, this track has changed a couple times through the years. Not that I say any is better or worse, but that's exactly what I want to look into today. What is the best Phoenix layout? Now, this isn't some kind of serious question. It's more of a question that I just want to kind of have fun with. So let's give a little backstory here. Phoenix Raceway opened in 1964, but its first cup race was in 1988. This was the site of Alan Kowicki's first win in which he debuted the Polish victory lap that he's now famous for. And this track through the years has been known as a flatter track that's difficult for drivers, but at the same time really helps show driver talent. And through these years, it's had some very high profile, well, profile changes. So let's look back at a couple of them right now. From 1988 to the first race at this track in 2011, there was the original layout. This layout was flat with straight nine degree banking in turns three and four and 11 degree banking in turns one and two. Because of the grassy layout and the rumble strips that were around the track itself, it was a very narrow racing line. At the time, this track was definitely more of a finesse-based track when it came to driving style. It seemed a lot more difficult to drive on this track, and you saw that reflect in who won at this track a lot. It wasn't very often that someone who really wasn't a deserving winner would win at Phoenix. Yes, there would be fuel mileage. Yes, there would be different strategy calls that would get people wins. But at the same time, those really helped show who was the best as an all-around team or who was the best driver on that particular day. This track has had tons of amazing moments, and the last race itself really showed a lot of what Phoenix was really good for at the time. The narrow surface really came into play when it came into the big accident on the back stretch or the back dog leg that is where basically two cars got together and it clogged up the entire field. Now it also became more of a finesse and talent based track when the two guys going for the win were Kyle Busch and Jeff Gordon with Gordon getting the last win on the old and weathered down surface. It was difficult to pass, yes, but Gordon managed to do so in some pretty exciting fashion. At the end of 2011 for the second race during that year's chase, there was the first redesign, and this went from 2011 through 2018. This one added a long apron for the dog leg that drivers could cut off. It added more apron room to drive on for turns three and four to try and give more maneuverability for drivers through that corner. Turns 1 and 2 is reconfigured from 11 degrees of flat banking to now progressive banking of 10 degrees up to 11 degrees to the wall. Turns 3 and 4 went from flat 9 degree banking to now progressive banking of 8 degrees to 9 degrees at the wall. So this hypothetically could make for better racing throughout runs and maybe some more multi-groove racing which the old layout had really neglected on giving most fans for most races. This one had some great moments. Everyone remembers Jeff Gordon and Clint Boyer's fight in 2012 and Ryan Newman absolutely body slamming Kyle Larson out of the way to make the final four in 2014. But this wasn't the only time that Phoenix would be changed. In 2018, they went forward to the current layout of Phoenix that we have today. The start finish line was moved to the exit of the previous turn two, and the pit lane was redesigned a little closer to the infield to give a little more gap between the racing surface and pit road and have a different pit road exit, which of course meant the wall was different leading out to that dog leg. It meant that you couldn't just cut all the way across it, you had to take more of a different angle into it. 
This one has had some pretty major moments in NASCAR history as it was moved to the finale in 2020, seeing the championships of Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson won there. So two of the most popular championships in the last 20 years. So when it comes to significance historically in NASCAR, this track has had some major moments. When you look at the old layout, among plenty of other amazing moments, it also for the longest time was the second to last race of the season, meaning that the championship at Homestead for a long time was set up by what happened at Phoenix. And then of course it got moved to the finale like I talked about before, and now it's even more important than it was before. This track in 2005 went from one race a year to two races a year, with the spring race, for the most part for about a decade, being a night race. So you might be wondering, what is my favorite? Call me old school, but my favorite is the original layout this track had. While I love to see the giant five and six wide dives into turn one, or previous turn three that Phoenix has nowadays on its restarts, I like the idea of having a track that really brings out more talent and it really brings out more of a necessity to stay out front. Strategy was definitely much better back in the day at Phoenix because different drivers knew that if they didn't do different tire strategies, they would be stuck in traffic. And that led to a lot of guys doing no tire or two tire stops or staying out on different strategies. And it also meant that those who were fast would have to come up through the pack, but also take care of their equipment. It seemed like a much tougher track back in the day. And that's something that I think modern NASCAR has really neglected on giving the drivers until probably last year. Also, I'm going to say this right now, the way the grandstands were back then and the grass around the track made it much more aesthetically pleasing. I know that has nothing to do with the racing itself, but as for someone like me, when I look at a racetrack, I don't want to look at a parking lot like the back dog leg currently is at Phoenix. I want to look at a track that looks beautiful on the outside, whereas this old school layout with grass all around it and really just a great backdrop overall personally is something that I've always loved. And I won't be real, that is all deeply rooted in nostalgia. See, I remember 2005 when this track went to two races. I remember how cool everything looked with the cars under the lights and how fast they looked at this small little one mile track in the desert. It's something that reminds me of when I was younger. It's something that gives me those good feelings inside that you just only get when you're a kid and everything is brand new. And the old Phoenix layout reminds me of when everything in NASCAR was brand new to me. So I gotta say, I know that that's not the greatest reason for liking it, but this old layout that went away after that first race there in 2011 always will have a special place in my heart personally. Now I've said all that, I want to know what your favorite layout is. There's really two to choose from because you can kind of combine 2011 to 2018 with the current one. But I'm going to say right now, let's just do it with three. Let's do the original layout, the 2011 to 2018 layout, and the 2018 to present. Which one of those is your favorite? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're at it, Leave a like on this video and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. To all of my channel members, thank you so much for your support. And if you want to hear more about Phoenix this weekend, be sure to tune into Danny B Talks channel for the NASCAR Weekly Podcast. We're going to talk about Phoenix. We'll probably talk about a lot of Las Vegas and anything else that's happened in the world of NASCAR. I'm sure there has been plenty of good things you'd want to hear about. So until next time. Have a good one.